electricity and electronics, we often find ourselves working with this equation. Capital R represents the total resistance of two resistors that are in parallel. I would like to take this expression and solve for capital R. Um, please recognize that I, I read this, I say R sub one. It just means that there's an item, in this case it's a resistor, and I'm gonna call it resistor number one, it's a subscript. And this is resistor number two. It's just that those, because they represent resistance, I wanna use the letter R, but they're not the same. So I can't call them both R, I have to describe them as resistor number one and resistor number two. In physics, we use it all the time. Temperature at time one, volume at time one, pressure at time one, so we call it T sub one, V sub one, P sub one. Um, sometimes we use sub zeros. I think I'm gonna to try to get to a problem where I do that, but I wanna solve for um, the capital letter R. So my LCD in this problem is capital R, R sub one, and R sub two. So I need to multiply both sides of this equation by all three of those letters. Can you picture that if you multiply this fraction by all three of those that the big R's cancel out? And the one gets multiplied by R sub one and R sub two? I think I'll, I'll write it in a minute. Can you picture multiplying this fraction by all three of those? Since it's already got the R sub one, those will cancel out and that one will get multiplied by the big R and the R sub two. I don't, I don't typically um, bother writing the R, but let's do it, or the one, I'm sorry. So it gets multiplied by the big R and the R sub two. Again, that one times that, but one times anything is just that anything. Can you picture multiplying this fraction by all three of those? The R twos will cancel out, so that one will get multiplied by the big R and the little r1. And we've cleared our denominators. So you gotta always do when you solve equations is clear the denominators. And now, let's see, I wanna solve for capital R. So capital R occurs in two places. So I'm gonna factor that out. It's the only way to solve for this. And so when I do, I'll have an r sub two plus an r sub one in here. So I've taken the greatest common factor out. Just check it. Does this r times r2 give you that? And does this r times R1 give you that. Sure does. And then finally, if I want to get the solve for the, the big R, the total resistance of these two resistors that are in parallel, then I need to divide by R sub two plus R sub one in order to get capital R alone. We tend to write this, I think I can write it down here. The total resistance is found by taking the product of the resistors divided by the sum of the resistors. I'm gonna put R1 first and R2 second. And I've rearranged this formula for R. In the event that I, uh, over and over and over again with two resistors that are in parallel, I wanna calculate the total resistance, I'm just gonna use this formula. Instead of this formula, it's a lot harder to use if I wanna know what R is and I know what R1 and R2 are. That's why I do this. I want to repetitively calculate what capital R is knowing these two. Um, let's take another one. So again, this was in electricity and electronics. I'm gonna do about four um, more. Again, such an important topic. I don't remember um, the topic area, but um, this is just a proportion, so it could be any number of things. Um, <clears throat> so W sub one over W sub two equals D sub one over D sub two. And I want to solve for, let's solve for um, D sub two. I keep on purpose um, solving for something that's in the denominator because you gotta be a little bit more careful with that situation. Um, the LCD for this is W sub two, D sub two. But it really doesn't matter because this is a proportion and it's a lot easier for me to just say to myself, Pat, geez, just take this W one and multiply it by D2. That's what I would have done anyway if I'd multiplied both sides by the LCD. I would have just taken the W sub one and multiplied it by D sub two. And then take this W sub two and multiply it by D sub one and set those equal to one another. And I'm trying to get D sub two alone and this is, this is W sub one times D sub two. So I'm gonna divide both sides by W sub one to get that D sub two alone, and I'm all done. Um, D sub two is equal to W sub two times D sub one 
over W sub 1. And I've rearranged that formula for D sub 2. Let's do a couple more that have um, a couple ways to attack them. So the first one, um, S equals V sub 1 plus V sub 2 times T divided by 2. And I want to solve for the variable called V sub 1. So let's see, i got to clear my denominators. My LCD is 2. Um, before we ever solved the equation, many of you just said, oh, look, i got to multiply both sides by 2 to get that out of the denominator. So over here, I have 2s equals v sub 1 plus v sub 2 times, I'm going to put the t in front. I just kind of like it in front. Didn't leave myself much room for it, but I'm going to put this t in front. You have two options right now. You can distribute the t times the v sub 1 and times the v sub 2. Or, I'm trying to get v sub 1 alone. The more practical option is since this reads t times that, is to divide both sides by t. That's a pretty practical option right here. But either of them will work. And so you'll have here then 2s divided by t equals v sub 1 plus v sub 2 trying to get v sub 1 alone, and it's got a v sub 2 added to it. So you got to get rid of that v sub 2. And the way to do that, I'm going to kind of put this off to the side. I'm going to subtract v sub 2 here, and I'm going to subtract v sub 2 there, so from both sides of the equations. So over here on the left, I have that 2s over t minus v sub 2. And on the right side, v sub 2 minus v sub 2 is gone, and that equals v sub 1. I'm all done. I would like to take a minute. I think I'm going to copy this answer over here, just a little bit farther away. So v sub 1 equals 2s over t minus v sub 2. So that's our solution, using one method. I'd like to do this problem again. So uh, in a different way, a little bit longer fashion, Answers are the same, they look different. So here I have 2s equals t times v sub 1 plus v sub 2. Do you ever look at the back of the book for the answers and go, geez, my answer doesn't look like theirs. I wonder if by chance it's the same, because often that's the case. You need to recognize that you might be right, but you just haven't written your answer in the same format. That's what's going to show up here in this problem. So I decided not to divide both sides by t. I just didn't notice it. And always, if you get rid of parentheses, you, you will not have any trouble. It's just a little bit of reducing might be required. So here I have t times v sub 1. And here I have t times v sub 2. Parentheses are gone. No fractions. I'm trying to get v sub 1 alone. So I have to subtract t times v sub 2 from both sides of this equation. So over here I have 2s minus that t, v sub 2. And over here I have t times v sub 1. And I want to get v sub 1 alone. And this is the only place that v sub 1 is in my equation. So I'm allowed now to divide both sides by t. And I'm done. So let's write my answer here. v sub 1 is all by itself. And over there I have 2s minus t, v sub 2 divided by t. This answer and that answer are exactly the same. And uh, I'm trying to think when. And in another time, we learned that when you divide polynomials by a monomial, that that denominator, that monomial, belongs to both of these, not just to that one. A lot of people want to cross off those t's. It belongs to the 2s also. So if I wanted to expand this, if you will, and, and simplify it a little bit more, the 2s is over the t. But so is the t v sub 2 over the t. And now I can remove those, and I have a, this expression written in this format. It is the 2s over t minus the v sub 2. To be honest, I'm not sure that, you know, I wouldn't um, necessarily care that a person um, simplified this. It is proper to do. Um, but this is a good answer. And that's a good answer. And they are equivalent as long as you don't cross off those T's.
let's maybe do one more that's similar. I'll leave that up there for a minute. And I want to solve for the big letter V in this problem. So the LCD is that whole denominator. It can't be factored. So I'm going to multiply this by the V plus 2R. And I'm going to multiply this by the V plus 2R. You could also remember that this was I over 1. And you could just set the cross products equal to one another. So over here you have I times that V plus 2R. And over here on the right hand side, when those cancel out, you have just the 2V left. Now this one's kind of important. Um, the variable V is on both the left and the right side of this equation. So I have to um, distribute the I and I have to call this I times V, and this, I'm going to put it as 2IR, and I'm trying to get these alone, so I don't be going and dividing by 2, because V is in your answer over here then, that's not acceptable. So you have to subtract IV from both sides, so that all the terms with V are on one side. So all my terms with V are on one side. I'm next going to need to factor the V out of that expression. I'm going to leave the left side as it is. It's 2I times R. Again, over here, take out the V, and I will have a 2 minus an I. Now I'm going to solve for V, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2 minus I to get this V alone, and my solution is that V would be found by taking 2 times I times R and dividing it by 2 minus I. Um, a good bit of rearranging formulas. Uh, we come to sometimes calling it, call it solving literal equations, but I like to say that we're rearranging a formula for another variable. Very, very useful topic. Um, I hope that you might see um, this in your other coursework as well, not in just your algebra courses, but in your science courses.